Hello everyone, my name is Egidio and welcome to our short video about lecture 3 from Harvard's course CS50's Web Programming with Python and JavaScript. Today we'll talk about Django and how to make our web pages dynamic. And click on the page on the description to get the three steps you can take to become a web developer without a degree. Okay, if we use only HTML and CSS to make our pages, it means that if we want to bring another information or an, uh, an update or new content, a new message, we will always have to update the HTML file and its content. But let's think about Google. Let's search about Harvard. And then let's search about Harvard News. The page is the same, but the content is always different considering what I'm searching about. So it's impossible for Google to create thousands and thousands of HTML files for every single possible way to search information. So what happens here is that they have a template of an HTML file and the content is brought by a server. In our case, we will use Python's Django framework to make our pages dynamic. So every time we access a web page, we will request for some information. And the way we request, the way we transfer this information between user and server, we need to define a pattern to send and receive this information. And the pattern that we, we use, it's the HTTP, the Hypertext Transfer Pro Protocol. You don't need to worry about all the details of HTTP, but the most important information here is that when you make a request, you have the method that you are requesting the information. The most important are get and post. You have the version of the protocol and the address. So when we type here, we will go to google.com and then we type Harvard. What happens here is that we are making a request using the get method. This is an example. And when you make a request, the server will give you back the answer, uh, as it called, response. And then you will have also the status code of this response. These are the most used ones. So you have the 200, that's OK. Uh, the famous 404, that is the not found page. So when we go to Google, go like google.com slash search. And the words that we'll search is, for example, news. So we're going to the Google domain, we're going to the path called search, and the variable we, you're giving is the word news. We, if you type a random path, for example, this, that is a not found path for Google. They are not expecting this. And just looking at the status code, we understand that there's nothing there. Like Google gives us a response, but it's just saying, okay, there's nothing here. We're not expecting this path. It's, all right, so let's create our first Django project. So you go here to your folder. I have this folder called tree project. You open the terminal and then you type Django admin start project and the name of the project itself. I'll call it just first. All right, so here you can see that Django created our project. And this is the basic content. So now we will access the project. So CD in the name of the project. We are, the terminal is inside the, the project. And if you type Python, manage.py run server. Now in our computer, the, the server is running in this address. So if you go here, here's our project for running. So now we have our project created. And when you think about Django, you have the project and the applications. You can think that the project is your whole system and the applications are the parts of your system. So if you're building an e-commerce or a new social media, the e-commerce, the, e the social media will be the project and the applications will be the parts of your system. So the, the login, the watch list of your commerce, the checkout from your e-commerce. So in this case, we'll create an application called Hello. You type here Python manage.py start app and we'll call the name of the app the hello app. Now the app is created here. We have the 
the main part of the project, so the first and first. And now we have our app, the Hello Web. So now that we have a new application in our project, we need to tell the base of the project that this, this app exists. So here we go to the settings.py file and we call here the installed apps. We need to add our app. So here we have the hello app. We save the file. And now that we have created our app and put it inside the settings file, let's create our first HTML file. As we are working with dynamic pages, we need to think about the, the files as templates. So inside your app, you create the template folder and inside it, you add the name of the app. And now you create the file. Let's call it just index. And here will be a simple HTML file, just a hello world. Now you need to create a method that when the user makes the request, will give the user this file. So the methods and all the functions that we use will be mainly will be in the views file. So here you can create the, the hello method. You will usually receive the request and, and inside the return of your method will be to render an HTML file. So you need to give the, the render method the request itself because sometimes you have information inside. So you need to give this information to the method and the file that will be rendered. The file is inside the hello folder slash index.html. When the user calls this method, we'll give him the hello world page. But this is just the name of the method. This is not the URL that the user is accessing. Now we need to create a URL that will call this method. So we have this URLs file for the base of the project, but our application doesn't have uh, an URL file yet. So let's create the URLs file for our application. We can use the, the file from the base of the project as a reference. The admin function will be just for the base of the project. We can delete this too. And here, how the, the URL patterns work. It's a list of all the paths you're expecting to deal with it. So let's create a path. Let's create the default one. It will be the base of our application. When you put this, the path, you need to give three answers. The route to your method, the method that will be used. So here we'll need to put views dot hello. And as we are working with views, we need to import this one. As the urls.py file and the views are in the same folder, we will put from dot. So from the same folder, you need to import views and here we have the views dot hello and the name will be just a tag that we will use later to reference this this path so we usually put the same name of the method hello all right so this is the first pattern to our application our application has a path but we need to tell the base of the project that our application exists so here we have just an access to the administrator page and we need to add a new one. So path, we'll put the same name of, the, of our application, the hello path. And this, instead of telling the method that will be called, we'll just include all the paths inside our URLs file. So when we get to the project, Every time we access something from our hello application, the base of the project knows that everything that starts with the address of the page slash hello slash, it will always look to the paths inside this file. And until now we have just one path set. Okay, so let's run it. As we use it, this method, we need to import it to, and here we are. Let's copy the address. 
there is a non found page because it's only expecting the administrator space or the hello application. So let's go to the hello application. Um, it's here it's saying that this page is not found, but there was a mistake here. If you want to access the base of the app, we put nothing inside the double quotes. Okay, so the server is reloading. And now if you try again, here's our page. Now let's make our page really dynamic. In Harvard's content, they make the hello world dynamic, giving the name as part of the path of the page. So here you have the hello Harry, and then it says hello Harry or hello Connor, and then it says hello Connor. And they make this changing the, the urls.py file. Instead of putting a word inside the path, so for example, hello or admin, they put a variable inside. So here it says that it will receive a string, it will receive a text, and the value we will put inside a variable called name. So it's a dynamic path. And when it receives this, it will call the greet method. And then the method will receive this variable here. And then we we'll just return hello in the name. This is the way that we pass information through the path. And you can read and check it later. But I'd like to add this content using variables in the in the path. So, for example, instead of using hello slash Harry, passing the value in the path, I'd like to pass the, the information using variables. So I will use the query parameter, and the name will be Harry. It doesn't work, right? Well, our path exists, but it doesn't know how to handle with this query parameter. Let's make that work. So here. In the views.py file, we need to get this information. We need to capture this information. So we'll create a variable here. It'll called name. And the information brought from the request is inside this. That's why we put the request as one argument from the method. So we'll take the request and the query parameter is in the get request. And inside the brackets, you just put the name of the query parameter. So it's name. So this, this will always capture the value of the query parameter called name. We can check here, for example, in the, in the terminal. I'll put the print name just that we can check. We need to save the file. All right, let's try there. OK, so here is Harry. Now we need to send this information to our HTML file. So we need to change the views and then we need to work with variables here inside, you see. So first let's send this information to the HTML file. After the, after the name of the file, you add a comma here and you add the value that you want to send. So you use curly brackets because then we can send many variables in just one return and then we say that we'll send the variable called 